Okay, perfect. Yeah. Let's let's move. Let's move ahead to the agenda. Great. <laughs> so, thank you again for for joining. Um, and I'm really pleased to um, to meet everybody and provide this provide this session um, on an introduction to the Wash for Work platform, a, a support platform for Wash Pledge um, signatories. And understand that um, all of you or many of you on the the call have signed the the Wash Pledge to provide water sanitation and hygiene um, throughout your operations and in the communities where you operate. Um, and so we'll go through um, a platform that we've um, we've set up to, um, to connect um, businesses to WASH expert organizations um, and the various programs that we have available for support on implementation as well as, as advancement um, towards our goals. Next slide, please. So as, as mentioned, we're, we're part of a, a broad network of, uh, of expertise um, through the United Nations Global Compact, the CEO Water Mandate, um, as well as a, a network of, of WASH um, expert organizations. Next slide, please. And the, uh, the WASH Water Sanitation and Hygiene Access uh, Initiative um, is the element of corporate water stewardship um, linking to water quality, water quantity, and um, water access as the key priorities of corporate water stewardship. And so for many companies, um, this WASH initiative is really helping to advance on um, the commitments to water stewardship overall. Next slide, please. We also support the, the WASH pledge um, commitments. The, um, the WASH pledge was initiated by the World Business Council for Sustainable Development in, in 2013. Um, the WBCSD has been a founding member of the WASH for Work platform. Um, and we agreed in, in 2020 um, to, uh, to host the WASH pledge um, on the WASH for Work platform as a broader multi-stakeholder initiative um, of WASH experts and business leaders taking action on WASH. And so for many of you um, uh, will know this, if you've taken the pledge commitment, but if you haven't, um, the pledge is, is really company's commitment to ensure that there is safely managed access to water sanitation and hygiene across your global operations um, within three years. Um, and that has now been extended as well to communities where you operate um, and your supply chains. And we'll have a chance to go through the elements of that commitment in more detail in this webinar. And so the, the partners um, uh, to connect to at Wash for Work are, are here. These are the global companies and global WASH expert organizations that make up our membership. Um, of course, this is um, growing uh, as we um, build out our, uh, our program to, to support the supply chains of these global companies, um, which many of you sit. So this, this um, initiative was set up in, in 2016, um, really to um, make, uh, really understand leading practice on um, the implementation of water sanitation and hygiene, but also um, continuous improvements. And we'll, we'll talk quite a lot about that today. There's been quite a lot of movement around um, climate resilience, for example, and of course the impacts um, of the global health um, plan pandemic, um, COVID-19. Um, but essentially the platform helps to connect partners um, uh, to advance leading practice, but also um, to provide the uh, support needed uh, in order to, um, to meet your corporate water stewardship goals around water sanitation and hygiene access. Um, we have uh, quite a few learnings um, in the first few years of the initiative. Um, we did a lot of work uh, around creating um, the, the business case for, uh, for WASH and really trying to understand for, for companies in addition to, um, of course, the social and environmental um, benefits, the also the financial um, ROI benefits from implementing water sanitation and hygiene. 
We also um, tracked the elements of, of best practice to be able to benchmark um, yourselves against um, uh, leading practice and, and understand how it's evolving. Um, the last two years, there has been um, quite a, a lot of investigation um, into the climate impacts on water sanitation and, and hygiene services and their continuity um, and resilience to climate change impacts and the different solutions uh, that, that are needed in order to um, prepare for climate impacts and um, it ensure continuation of services um, through expected climate change uh, impacts by region. Next slide, please. So our current work program uh, in terms of advancing leading practice um, uh, with, uh, of course, access to water sanitation and hygiene services being the baseline, um, we are currently advancing on a standardized reporting method for the benefits um, of WASH. You know, as mentioned, um, in many cases, uh, the priority has been on um, uh, understanding the um, the access levels and in terms of, of numbers of, of people with and without access and the actions that we're taking um, to mitigate that. Um, however, there are multiple co-benefits also for other water stewardship goals, such as water quality and quantity. And so um, we're currently in the process of developing a standardized accounting method, which will also help us to report on progress against global WASH goals as um, a, uh, a business collective. And the, the two elements of the work program that we'll focus on today are WASH in the supply chain and um, a broader support program for suppliers operating in different contexts. And this um, uh, initiative was, was set up this year with the leadership of, uh, of Xylem, uh, who we have on the, the call and um, whom many of you are, uh, are, are in the supply chain uh, of Xylem. Um, this is a really exciting initiative, which um, will have um, incredible impact towards the global goals of water sanitation and, and hygiene access. And so um, we've been working together with Xylem and other leading companies on the platform to really understand um, how leading practice is, is advancing, you know, the expectations of global companies um, for the supply chain um, in, in uh, consideration of water sanitation and hygiene access, but also the growing expectations of, of global stakeholders. Um, and I'm going to share the, the learnings of some of that work in, in just a minute. Um, but uh, essentially what uh, we've done out of this is created a specific working group for supply chain partners um, that are new to um, implementation or looking to get guidance on implementation and uh, leading standards for water sanitation and hygiene. Next slide, please. And so in terms of um, our consultation so far, um, we found that, uh, again, a huge opportunity to accelerate impact on sustainable development goal six, universal access to water sanitation and hygiene um, through businesses and, and through um, supply chains uh, and communities where, where companies and um, supply chain partners operate. Um, leading practice that's evolved is that many companies now are requiring um, uh, supplier partners to um, uh, to take a commitment um, and show progress on water sanitation and hygiene access uh, as well as a, as a, as a collective. Um, we're finding that many global companies also provide incentives and support um, for their supply chain, um, especially in, in quite difficult contexts of, of water stress. Um, and that really behavior change and gender equity elements of ROSH are increasingly being prioritized um, because it's not uh, always just an infrastructure um, uh, issue in, in terms of services being available, but, um, but, uh, but key challenges around um, water stress or social norms that have been inhibiting um, the uptake of use uh, of that infrastructure on water sanitation and hygiene. We've also found that different sectors are starting to develop sector-specific WASH policies um, and solutions, particularly in the agricultural um, supply chains um, and, uh, and textile supply chains. But what was also identified um, is that we still don't have a lot of information. Um, and it's been, you know, of course, difficult and 
we're not wanting to create a, a reporting burden um, on suppliers. Uh, however, there is a, um, a gap in, in terms of data, in, in terms of understanding what is the size of that, that gap and in terms of numbers of people um, still um, uh, without access to uh, what would be considered safely managed water sanitation and, and hygiene access, and therefore the different actions and solutions that, that we can take. Um, also standardized reporting um, on wash actions and, and targets of, of suppliers has not um, been a, a requirement of, of global companies. Although um, in the next point, you'll see there's increasing expectations of reporting and disclosure um, requirements for global companies um, that want to know what is the risk exposure for companies um, linked to water sanitation and hygiene access um, across supply chains. How many numbers of people um, are, um, are not yet um, accessing adequate services and what are the plans to um, mitigate that? And of course, as mentioned before, evolving climate and health risks um, have been putting um, the services that have been put in place at risk. And, um, uh, and we're, uh, we're seeing a, a big drive from our global wash expert organizations to mitigate this. So maybe I'll just pause here for a moment and, uh, and invite uh, Katrina from, from Xylem maybe just to, to say a few words um, about the program that uh, we've been implementing and, and where you see the, the opportunity here um, for your supply chain partners. No, absolutely. So yeah, I think firstly, thank you to you know to the suppliers who have joined. It's difficult for me to know actually who's on and from from which supplier. But I think you mentioned we've got some current wash uh, signatories and also potentials to uh, to join. And I think it just goes without saying. I mean, with Xylem, you know, sustainability is the absolute core, you know, to our values especially everything around water and also to our people and what we provide to our customers. So we, you know, we've made the commitment to champion water stewardship and wash for work. So as part of this, you know, this mandate, it's, it's absolutely quite important to us within procurement and our supply chain. So we really do expect our suppliers to care and be as passionate about water as we are, because it's a big, you know, part of our why, okay, and why we're here. And really why we choose the partners that, you know, that we have to, you know, to work with and, and commit to help them grow. And we would also never ask a supplier to do something we wouldn't do. So, of course, we've signed the pledge and we're working very actively, you know, um, on water sanitation hygiene across our communities in which we operate and, and also our own sites. I was curious um, if there are any current suppliers on who have signed the pledge that could maybe share... Um, something with us about, you know, any developments that you've implemented since signing the pledge or any challenges that you have. I'd love to hear a little bit of feedback from anyone, not to put anyone on the spot, of course, but um, if anyone was willing to, yeah, to share maybe their experience so far. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you. Wonderful. So, um, Let's take that as an open invitation. Uh, we'd love to hear from you on uh, on different um, uh, actions that you're taking already, having signed the WASH pledge as uh, as inspiration for for others, um, but also any any challenges or, or support that you're looking for. Uh, again, where the WASH will work platform um, might be able to uh, support your efforts. Um, I'd like to invite that you use the chat function um, to uh, to indicate. Um, uh, some of your your actions or um, or support areas, and and then we'll have a chance to um, to call on people directly. Great. Well, let, let's move ahead. Um, in the next section uh, of the meeting, we we, we wanted to, to share really the, the global state of, of water sanitation and hygiene and, and why it's been difficult and some of the tools that have been developed to, to help companies um, with their, their implementation. Um, and, uh, and throughout, please again, use the chat if there's any questions um, on the content going forward. Next slide, please. So we continue to have a, a significant global gap of um, you know, billions uh, of people still without access. And for many companies, um, uh, this is, is often a surprise. Um, many companies um, assume that they, they have um, water uh, sanitation and hygiene access you know, across their, their operations. Um, and it's not 
Um, and if they don't, it's, it's usually not for uh, lack of investment or effort, but really the challenges of the water cycle and water stress um, in many areas um, and uh, including um, social norms as, as mentioned before. So still a huge gap to fill. Um, <clears throat> you can see here that there are um, certain geographies um, really still um, with a, a very acute need for, uh, for basic services. And of course, we're striving to go beyond basic services to um, safely managed and climate resilient. I was just going to add here as well. I think this is always a shocking statistic. Yeah, whenever I see this, it just kind of brings it back home. And to have access to basic wash is a, it's a basic human right. Yet we still find ourselves today with this enormous challenge globally, where you know people don't have access to this. So it's every single person's responsibility, you know, to to help move towards this. And that's you know. This is why it's so important to us and, and why we expect this of our suppliers yet, because I think everybody should be passionate about this, um, especially when they're working within you know, the water sector. So I just wanted to add that because um, this, this one really pulls at my heartstrings every time, you know, every time I see it. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. And I think that the next slide reinforces um, Katrina's point uh, in the area of sanitation where um, water access uh, has been, um, or actions on water access have been more advanced, but sanitation um, has been lagging behind. If we could go to the, the next slide, please. And, and mostly in a, in a business context, because, uh, you know, water obviously is, um, uh, is a resource needed for, for, for operations and, and sanitation. Um, it, there's often a belief that this is a, a, a government um, responsibility at the household level, um, but but of course we find in many um, different contexts that um, that um, actions are, are not in place at, at the policy level, um, and um, government spending has not been allocated, and therefore people still go without these basic services. So really, this is an even bigger problem in in sanitation and um, uh, waste uh, waste wastewater and sewage management as you can as you can see here half the population still not with um, safely managed services and we're even finding now that in um, contexts where there, there may be services in 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 place in um, in higher income um, countries that the cost to maintain these services is is only growing and and newer decentralized innovations um, are, are starting to be looked at um, and so there will be need, need to be a reinvestment um, in those services for um, climate resilience uh, going forward next slide please so um this is a i think a really critical um, um you know, bookend uh, of the problem, but also what we need to do to address it. Um, this is from the uh, World Health Organization and UNICEF, who are the joint monitoring program on um, water sanitation and hygiene access, the global goal, global sustainable development goal to 2030. And five years into the global goals in 2020, um, they made an assessment of, of where we are and what we need to do and, um, and uh, identified this 4x acceleration that will be required between 2020 and 2030, the water action decade, um, to really solve this problem um, by 2030. And this is really where supply chains can um, contribute massively um, to this goal. Um, if we can link up our networks, um, link up solutions, um, link up investments, uh, then we really believe that that global supply chains can be a big part of the solution. So we really see this as a as an opportunity. Um, also, as as Katrina said, but still quite a long way to go. I think you see the numbers here, um, especially for for sanitation. Um, uh, so. A lot of work to do, but but again, um, the more supply chains are are um, linked up uh, with a, with a common approach, we really believe we can make um, significant progress to twenty thirty. Next slide, please. So risks, um, you know, not only the um, element of um, 
uh, of human rights and our, our joint commitment to the global goals, um, but there's there's real business benefits here. And um, obviously uh, water sanitation and hygiene um, uh, really linked to worker health and safety, um, but also productivity. And you'll see in, in a moment that we have some new evidence of productivity gains. Um, but also security of business critical raw materials um, for, for many sectors in, in terms of um, uh, workers' ability to, um, to, you know, to, to work and, and provide um, the, um, uh, those services in terms of, of capturing critical raw materials. So um, really critical for, for many supply chains. Um, and also in, in communities, uh, there's a, a, a reputation and license to operate um, issue for, for companies, of course, with drawing water for operations in, in many communities um, where uh, that uh, do not have reliable access to, to drinking water. And, and so to also be active in communities and ensuring um, that that access um, is critical for business license to operate. And the, um, the CDP, the, the CDP water program um, uh, issued this, this um, statement earlier this year when they evaluated just 10 global companies, uh, they were able to calculate a, a risk of, of 6 billion um, uh, for lack of water sanitation and, and hygiene for, um, uh, for um, business continuity and, and growth. We have a hand up. Is there is there a question at this point? You can unmute yourself. If yeah, uh, it's a, it's not a question. I want to share something. Or maybe it's helpful. Yes, uh, I'm from Egypt. Uh, I'm a procurement engineer, and you know, uh, I'm in the market. So I found that the government uh, in Egypt is uh, trying to to facilitate uh, transferring water to some places that uh, it, it does not have any water. You know, people for, for, from some area, they have to walk more than two or three kilometers to have some water. So uh, I just want to share this uh, with everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And, and this is, uh, again, where, um, uh, you know, where governments have not been able to provide um, basic services where businesses working together with governments um, and um, community partners um, can also be part of the solution. So thank you for, for sharing that. Next slide, please. So on the on the opportunity side here, you know, um, uh, it was really important to many, many companies um, to be able to increase their budgets and investments in ensuring this critical access um, to be able to prove the financial ROI. Um, and there was assumptions around, you know, of course, healthy people, healthy company, uh, which is is really the outcome of um, of water sanitation and, and hygiene access. Um, but we didn't have the evidence to prove it, and so we conducted a, a study um, together with several global companies over the past two years. Those results were just published in in August this year, which do show now um, uh, marked evidence of increased productivity gains, avoided health costs and even contributions to shareholder value um, through um, uh, water stewardship um, and um, um, uh, commitments to sustainability. And, and so that is, a, that is work. If that's also uh, a challenge that you're facing in, in, in terms of um, financing and investment um, of, these, of these actions, we now have a, a much more robust financial ROI case um, for these, uh, these investments uh, for the company. Um, a recent report by WaterAid um, also gives gives evidence that um, that wash access can unlock trillions of dollars in, in value as well, um, and that is uh, again through many new innovations in um, in water sanitation and, and hygiene provision that um, uh, that is enabling services to be much more efficient and um, producing many co-benefits also um, for environmental challenges of, of water quality and, and quantity. Also, um, a, a lot of uh, focus right now on the risks of climate change, on ensuring the continuity of, uh, of services. So uh, in, in drought, if we've just heard from one of the, the participants, increasing droughts and increasing stress on um, 
on water and and uh, and access uh, for for communities, but also um, flooding and, and too much water um, really uh, disrupting services in terms of wastewater management and in terms of um, communities operating with latrines, for example, in contamination of water. So a lot of new solutions are now being looked at and, and really important that uh, as we as we do our self-assessments um, of the current um, baseline of, of wash access that we really also consider potential climate impacts and, and where services may need to be updated to be climate resilient. Next slide, please. So the good news, though, <laughs> is that um, there are many tools, you know, that have been developed to to support companies um, from different sectors operating in different contexts with different water challenges, um, you know, leading to um, water sanitation and hygiene access challenges. And so um, there is a this toolkit um, that um, has been developed to to really help companies through a step process of um, of how to um, uh, assess risks and uh, and then implement um, actions and prioritize actions. And next slide, please, which shows us the five um, steps of the WASH pledge implementation, um, which include establishing a baseline of just understanding that uh, you know where you have um, uh, risks throughout your operations on. Um, the provision of, of safely managed water sanitation and, and hygiene. Um, there's self-assessment tools of, of how to calculate um, that baseline and which leads to the ability to prioritize um, uh, gaps and uh, in areas for, for action. And then of course, improvement plans, disclosure and communications. Next slide, please. So the, the first step um, is um, establishing policies um, within your company to, uh, to really um, make clear the compliance with local and, and national laws and, and regulations or in absence of national laws and, and regulations compliance with, um, with global best practice set out by um, the uh, World Health Organization and, and UNICEF Joint Monitoring Program. Um, Policies then, of course, lead to um, uh, the need to have monitoring um, mechanisms um, and mechanisms to measure impact. Next slide, please. This is just a, a snapshot of the, the self-assessment tool included in our WASH Pledge Implementation Toolkit. Um, as you can see here, it's, it's really focused on um, helping companies to prioritize their, their actions. Um, and you'll see that it cuts across workplace water supply, sanitation, hygiene, um, the value chain, and community um, wash. Uh, also, uh, as you'll see a little bit later, um, we're seeing increasingly the, um, the element of menstrual hygiene management and gender equity um, coming in here as, as one of the elements that, that companies are evaluating. Next slide, please. So what, what is considered um, best practice in, in terms of, uh, of workplace water supply? Um, accessible drinking water that meets quality standards, is clean and appropriately um, uh, disinfected, um, drinking water, ongoing drinking water testing, and um, regular inspection. And I think that this is a a key element, again, infrastructure alone um, will not um, help us to reach our goals. The, the ongoing um, operations, maintenance, and monitoring of the quality of the service is also key. Um, and we'll see a little bit later behavior change, um, you know, is, is also key. Um, and that's been a huge learning, I think, for many companies implementing the WASH pledge. Next slide, please. Workplace sanitation, uh, of course, access to improved and inconvenient toilet facilities. Um, we found that for, for many companies in, in many contexts where it wasn't a requirement to have facilities for women, this was one of the first actions that they took to make sure that there um, were um, uh, separate um, um, services for both men and women um, to be able to access. And, uh, and uh, of course, um, facilities for, um, for, for different um, 
um, uh, handicaps is also uh, becoming a norm. Wastewater is equally important, and, and I know that um, for many, uh, you know, getting the services uh, in place uh, in terms of access to toilets has been a priority, um, but we increasingly see that we have to look at the whole system, and um, toilet facilities have to be designed in tandem with wastewater and sewage management, and there's been a lot of innovation um, in this space, much lower cost um, uh, services that, that can be implemented, um, and also circular services that, that help to um, uh, recycle gray water, for example, that can be used in, in other um, parts of company operations. Um, lighting and safety is key, especially for, um, for women. Again, ongoing operations and maintenance, um, menstrual hygiene and sanitary product um, disposal, and medical waste disposal um, where, where appropriate. Next slide, please. In terms of, of hygiene, of course, this has come into focus in the last two years um, with, with COVID-19 and, and many vulnerabilities exposed, um, but personal hygiene and hand washing facilities, um, behavior uh, and awareness um, training uh, as well, showers and, and bathing facilities, um, um, personal protective equipment, um, training and for, for cleaning and maintenance staff, um, cleaning equipment storage and, and monitoring and reporting on, on water-related diseases. Next slide, please. So really important to note, and this came out in the study released this year on the financial ROI that um, unsafe and unreliable drinking water sanitation and services at home for workers um, is equally important um, for that for health, well-being, and to achieve those productivity gains and, and continuity of, um, uh, of business operations. Um, so really critical to also have in your plans um, an understanding of the communities where your workers live and the, the current status of water sanitation and, and hygiene access, because it doesn't matter where they get sick, whether it's at the workplace or at home, still that will impact on um, your company's um, operations. Also, um, in terms of water security and, and climate resilience, um, the um, insurance of, uh, of climate resilient communities um, ha has really become um, more in focus for, for many companies and certainly the, the global um, um, stakeholder community. Uh, and, and again, companies' responsibilities here when it relates to workers um, and their access in communities uh, and homes. Next slide, please. So maybe I'll just pause there to see if there's any any questions on um, what is considered best practice and um, and uh, first steps in, in the implementation journey for the WASH pledge. Okay, I'll go on to a few more tools um, that will be helpful and available to you via the, the WASH for Work network. Next slide, please. So the, the Water Action Hub is a, an open source platform and there's a, a link there at the bottom in green. Um, and, and really this is a, a key tool for helping companies to identify partners um, to, to work with on the ground. So whether you're looking to, to work with NGO partners in communities that can, um, that can help to implement uh, WASH services, or you're looking for service providers um, uh, with particular um, um, criteria for, for water sanitation and hygiene access needs um, in your particular region, um, this is a great source to go to, um, to identify those implementation partners, but also to share your own WASH actions um, in order for other companies to, to link up and partners to, to link up with you in, in order to um, accelerate progress. And this is one of the key questions that we've gotten um, Katrina and our, I think in our um, piloting uh, of, of support on the WASH pledge implementation this year with suppliers is really help on identifying those implementation partners to work with on the ground. So the Water Action Hub is a great, a great tool for that. Also currently in development at, um, through the WASH for Work platform uh, is a standardized accounting and reporting um, method on WASH. You know, we really, I think I'll agree that 
data is critical here, both for, for understanding um, where we are and, and the actions that need to be taken, but also to measure progress, um, impact, and financial ROI um, on those actions. And so um, we've been told that there's there's been um, less reporting on behalf of, of companies because we haven't had this standardized um, accounting and reporting method that is also accepted by stakeholders. And so this is now in development. We're really excited about this uh, and the, the opportunity to have a really consistent way of reporting also for global um, supply chains and, and where you may be suppliers to multiple companies to have a consistent reporting mechanism so that we're not creating a, a reporting burden here. Also tools in order to really help um, um, with this, this reporting. So um, this uh, a first iteration of this will be available as of March, 2023. And we really hope to be able to make this available very quickly um, to all companies and um, uh, of course also supplier partners. Next slide, please. This is a lot of words on this slide, but let me try and break it down for you. Um, so also this challenge of climate resilience, which I, I've mentioned a few times, um, and the, the impacts and, and needs for reinvestment in, in WASH services where climate has impacted those services. And so we spent um, some time over the past um, 18 months really unpacking what we know um, about climate impacts on water, sanitation, and hygiene. Um, uh, our stakeholder partners have done a lot of work here to identify climate risks and, and really help to break that down in terms of what to be looking for, also by region. Um, but we wanted to put this into a business context as well. Um, mostly it had been developed for, um, for governments and, um, and, uh, and, and NGO um, implementing partners but we wanted to understand what this means for, for business. And, and so we created this business declaration that we will um, endeavor to, um, to include um, climate risk assessment um, into our, our WASH implementation plans and some guidance on, on how to do that. Um, and this declaration was, was just launched um, at um, the global climate meetings um, in Egypt for our colleague uh, joining from, from Egypt just two weeks ago. And there will be ongoing work um, next year in order to build out the guidance, which we will also make um, available to supply chain partners. Next slide, please. So uh, what are the benefits to be being part of this platform? Um, really, we're, we're looking to help recognize um, companies for the actions they're taking to increase WASH access and contributions to SDG 6, but also your commitments um, in supplier uh, codes of conduct, um, for example. Um, also to provide direct access to leading practice on WASH access um, via corporate peers, um, but also WASH expert um, organization members, which you saw at the beginning of the presentation. And finally, to continually develop tools and um, support um, uh, opportunities for companies to achieve their own corporate water stewardship commitments to WASH access. Next slide, please. So the initiative um, already has a, a lot of support from the global network, as we mentioned, the United Nations Global Compact and CEO water mandate. So um, the uh, the fees for membership are, I think, are, are quite nominal uh, by way of uh, of, uh, of member fees. Um, corporate members three thousand um, U.S. dollars per year um, just to staff the 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 platform and and support. Um, working groups. Um, for suppliers, uh, this is a, a lesser fee of, of 1,000 US dollars um, per year, again, to have that continuous access to um, support, but also rec being recognized for, for your own um, actions and achievements. And non-corporate partners, our WASH expert organizations, pay a fee of, of 1,500 US dollars um, per year. Um, now, really want to make it clear here, and I know this is important to Xylem uh, as well, there is no fee to sign the WASH pledge, of course, and implement your actions. This is really just to help us support you and the growing um, group of, of companies that are, are looking for support on implementation. Um, uh, really happy to um, you know, discuss this with you if you have any um, questions about it. We hope that we've made it so that it's very easy 
to, to access this platform um, and support and engagement. Um, but again, if you have any questions about it, please let us know. And I think our final slide is the next one. And then we'll open it up for questions. So these are, are just some statements from, oh, from our, our members uh, and the advocacy that we believe that scaling up WASH is achievable um, through our um, business networks um, by sharing knowledge and evolving leading practice together. Thank you. I see a couple of hands up. Um, Katrina, please yeah. get us started on Q&A. Yeah, I put a, a comment in the chat. I was just curious because I wanted to know who was on in, in terms of our suppliers. So if you wouldn't mind just putting the name of your company um, in the chat, um, just so I can see who's on. Um, and then obviously, if you have or haven't signed the, the pledge, it would be, be interesting to know. And then obviously, I'd like to do a follow up with you individually. Thank Wonderful. You. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, the floor is open. If there's any um, questions or um, or comments or if you'd like to share some of the actions that, that you've taken already on your WASH um, pledge implementation journey, or if you have questions on signing the WASH pledge and uh, being part of the WASH for Work platform. I want to ask if this is a must to sign the wash or not for the supplier. Yes, I mean, I can answer that. I mean, we don't, you know, we wouldn't say you have to sign it to do business with us, but obviously we, you know, we, we want you to because it's critically important to us. And as we mentioned, it doesn't cost anything, you know, to, to sign the pledge. It's more to have, you know, all of our vendors on a kind of common path with us because, um, as mentioned, you know, it's critically important to Xylem, you know, it's at the heart of what we do and why we do it. And for us to solve water, okay, we also need our suppliers to commit to the, the same actions that we commit to and to come on this journey with us. And it helps us have that common voice and commitment. Um, and you can see that we really can make a difference, okay? And it might be that you have gaps within your, your company or your operations, and we really want to help um, close those gaps if we can. So it's it's not an absolute, if you don't sign it, you can't do business with us, but we're certainly looking, you know, we are moving that way. Um, and we, you know, we do want our suppliers to commit to the same, you know, um, wash commitments that we, we have committed to. So I hope that answers your question. And what um, company are you from? Mm, from Ningbo, China. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I see the, the, uh, the member fee like 1,000 US dollars per year. That, that is a fee to be a member of WASH, not, not as a sign, right? That's correct. That's correct, yeah. Okay. And, and again, what that fee goes towards is, is just uh, our continuous um, development of, of support materials, um, you know, also uh, to support you in, in connecting to implementing partners, connecting to leading practice. Um, and so we, we hope it's an accessible um, fee, but just helps us to provide, you know, to have the res resourcing in terms of people to provide the support that's needed. Okay, thank you, thank you. So, so I may have to leave in 10 minutes because we, <laughs> I'm in a quarantine hotel. So. Oh, no. Oh, dear. You? You'll say I'm in a hotel, <laughs> so yes. I, will leave, I will leave in 10 minutes. I just completed the quarantine time, so I... Oh, oh wow. my. I bet, you, I bet you can't wait to open that door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, yes, yes. So this meeting where I think we have, we were almost finished the meeting right now. Yes, yes, oh, it really, oh, we're just good, in the, the Q&A. So we can um, we can keep the floor open for those that may have um, questions um, or would oh, like to okay. share some of their learnings. But uh, the presentation part of the program is now concluded. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions before we come to a close? Any other information we can provide? Well, well, perhaps in, in terms of next step, I, I know um, that we did this uh, as well. Um, last year, Katrina, is um, uh, we usually send a letter um, in December to, um, to all WASH pledge signatories, just really outlining um, these opportunities for, for support um, and uh, to also um, 
invite your comments on, on what would be most helpful to you in, in terms of supporting your WASH pledge implementation journey. So um, you can look for that from, from us and we really hope to engage with you on this journey, um, really motivated uh, to really be able to show the impact that business is having on meeting these global goals um, and uh, providing all the support that we can to get there. Thank you very much, everyone. Wishing you um, a very nice rest of your day. Bye for now.